So let's meet the writing section. What is all the fuss about? Is it as horrible as you think it is? Well, maybe, but stick with us, and I promise that the SAT will seem a whole lot less scary after we're through. You can see on the screen that the writing section is divided into three sections. The first section is a 25-minute essay. The essay is always the first section on the SAT, so it's always going to be the first thing you do when you begin the test. Many kids say that they wrote the fastest they have ever written in their entire lives on this essay, kind of like they were writing for their lives. The second writing section is another 25-minute section. However, this section is all multiple choice. There are 35 questions in this section. So let's do the math. If you were to finish the section, you'd be working on an average of 35 questions divided by 25 minutes. That comes out to 43 seconds per question. Wow, 43 seconds. No matter how you slice or dice it, that's going pretty fast. That's probably not even enough time to sprint out of the testing center if you wanted to. So, in the second writing section, there are three different types of multiple choice questions. Okay, and I want you to write this down. You'll see 11 improving sentence questions, 18 identifying sentence error questions, and 6 improving paragraph questions. We'll go over each of these question types in a bit. Because knowing what you're up against is half the battle. And that is one cliche that is true. Dun dun dun! Section 3 is our last and shortest section. It's only 10 minutes long and it consists of 14 questions. Also, it's always going to be the last section of the SAT. So you kind of start and end your SAT experience with the writing section. All 14 questions in Section 3 will be improving sentence questions. So, if you were jotting down notes, and I hope you were, and you were doing the math simultaneously in your head with me, you might have realized that that means there are 25 improving sentence questions in total, making this question type about 50% of the multiple choice section. And I don't know about you, but most people think 50% is a big deal. So let's definitely get familiar with this question type. Alrighty then, let's zero in on improving sentence questions. They are, after all, half the multiple choice questions. These will ask you to improve upon a poorly written sentence. You should be very familiar with the instructions on the SAT because, surprise, all the instructions are always the same on every single SAT. So why waste time reading the instructions on test day when you can save valuable minutes right now by committing to memory the instructions, right? So let's read the directions together now so you never will have to again. The following sentence tests correctness and effectiveness of expression. Part of each sentence or the entire sentence is underlined. Beneath each sentence are five ways of phrasing the underlined material. Choice A repeats the original phrasing. The other four choices are different. If you think the original phrasing produces a better sentence than any of the alternatives, select choice A. If not, select one of the other choices. Okay, so what does this first paragraph tell you? In case you had trouble understanding or you zoned out, let me give you the short summary. Basically, you're going to see sentences with parts of them underlined. Sometimes the whole thing will be underlined. 
And then you're going to have to look through the answer choices to see which answer choice best corrects the underlying portion of the sentence. OK. And jot this down. For improving sentence questions, answer choice A is always the same. So what does that mean? That means you never have to read answer choice A because you just read it. It's the same as the original sentence. Now let's go back and read the second paragraph. In making your selection, follow the requirements of standard written English. That is, pay attention to grammar, choice of words, sentence construction, and punctuation. Your selection should result in the most effective sentence, clear and precise, without awkwardness or ambiguity. OK, stop. What does this paragraph tell you? It says that you have to pay attention to grammar, yes, but also to choice of word, sentence construction, and punctuation. In fact, you are looking for the most effective sentence. Not just the grammatically correct sentence, but also the most effective sentence. Because sometimes, more than one answer choice will be grammatically correct. But only one answer choice can be the right answer. So we're looking for the best sentence, and that means the most effective sentence. And if that still sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, don't worry, we're going to clear it up in a minute. Okay team, back to the directions. Let's take a look at the example here. Laura Ingle Wilder published her first book, and she was 65 years old then. Okay, well, the first thing you should notice is that this is a run-on sentence. And what is a run-on sentence? Well, you probably already know, but a run-on sentence is two sentences inappropriately fused together. As soon as we realize the original sentence has an error, we can eliminate answer choice A. So without even reading answer choice A again, we can immediately eliminate it. Now let's look at the other answer choices. Answer choice B says, Laura Ingle Wilder published her first book when she was 65. And the choice C says, she published her first book at age 65 years old. And answer choice D says, she published her first book upon the reaching of 65 years. And lastly, answer choice E says, she published her first book at the time when she was 65. Hmm, so they all kind of sound the same, don't they? But yet, they are not. And there's only one right answer. Okay, now, let's break it down. Answer choice C and D are actually ambiguous. Why? And what does ambiguous even mean? I'm glad you asked. Ambiguous means that there is something unclear about the sentence. For example, answer choice C and D don't tell you who is 65, do they? Pay attention now. Answer choice C says, Wilder published her first book at age 65 years old. But who is 65? Is it Wilder or is it the book? It's actually unclear. Same deal with answer choice D. Wilder published her first book upon the reaching of 65 years. But who reached 65? Is it Wilder or is it the book? Again, it's unclear. So that leaves us with answer choice B and E. Both do tell you who is 65, right? Answer choice B says when she was 65. And answer choice E says at the time when she was 65. 
So which is the right answer then? And what do we do when it looks like we have two right answers? This is a tough one. Although both answer choices are technically grammatically correct, we are looking for the most effective sentence. Not just the grammatically correct sentence, remember, but also which sentence is most clear and concise as well. So let's look at answer choice E. The words at the time is kind of redundant because whenever you write the word when, it's already implied that we're talking about a time, right? That makes answer choice B the correct answer. It might all seem a bit tricky, but what you really need to understand is this. Answer choice B is the right answer because it corrects the run-on and because it says all the same stuff as answer choice E, but it is shorter. That means it did the same amount of work as answer choice E, but with less words. And that sounds like an effective sentence to me.